Hey, Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life. Happy 4th of July. Um, we are out here doing the same thing most people are doing this week, uh, trying to get outdoors. It has been a very, very rainy week, and uh, I suppose I should lead off with a bit of an apology. Um, I've spent more time in the bushwhacker in the month of June than I have home, and I don't think I've brought the camera or filmed anything. See, I've been filming a lot on modifications. I've got some videos coming out about solar, but uh, as far as just bringing the camera out here when we're camping, uh, it's, it's been a while. I think it's since I was in Virginia that I had the camera out. So there are a few things I wanna share with you today. I've been getting a ton of emails asking questions about the setups and how I'm using specific things. I'd like to get into that. And we're also going to be talking about how we found this site that we're camping uh, this week. We got this with very short notice. It did cost us a couple bucks, but it's one of the most unusual campsites that I've ever stayed in. So we're going to check that out as well. The place we're staying in this week is one of the most unusual campsites I've ever stayed in. We found it using the website Hip Camp. Now, if you're new to Hip Camp, it's kind of like the Airbnb for camping. Uh, property owners can host their property. You book through the website. The fees are all over the place. Sometimes you pay more than a campground. Sometimes you pay less. Now, I have found some amazing places on this site. And for 4th of July, the week of 4th of July, we found this place with very, very short notice. So it's just an additional resource for people to use to be able to book some of these amazing sites. I'm finding more and more frequently that you can bring your teardrop camper even into these sites that were designed for tent camping. So just an, another added bonus for uh, getting outdoors a little bit more. With a quick glance around our campsite, it might appear that we're just surrounded with old, spooky, dilapidated buildings. And that would be correct. But what's actually going on here is the owner of the property has purchased these historic buildings to renovate them and convert them into an arts and science center. This 1800s theater house has been out of commission for a long time. He's using the funds from the hip campsites as well as some fundraising to be able to do this renovation. Having spent the last two years of my life renovating a historic building myself for similar philanthropic causes, I can really identify with the struggle here as well as feel really good about supporting the cause. All right, well, I can also identify with the struggle of watching a boring video. Luckily, Ripple's on her way over to herd us back to the campsite. Last note on the place we're staying in, obviously this would be non-ideal to bring kids. There are some hazards all over the place, but for us, we were looking for a secluded, spacious campsite, a place we could set up our whole outside setup so that if we had a week of daytime rains, we'd be able to weather the storm. So things like local restaurants become a lot more important with trip planning when we're seeing this kind of weather. And of course, as always, if the weather does break, some local hikes and everything are a must. For that, this place really fit the bill. Oh, <laughs> 
All right, so come along. Let me show you with the campsite that we're using for this week. Um, it is about as full on as any of the campsites that I'm going to set up. We basically brought the works for this one. So come check it out. This week was forecasted to be rain every single day, including some pretty severe downpours. <laughs> So the site that we wanted to design uh, was around our Easy Up. Now, I've talked about the Euromax before. This is a really high quality canopy and um, it, it's very, very rugged and it has the option of setting the sidewalls up. You can see that we set up two sidewalls now. If the rain gets heavy enough, we put a, an additional sidewall. So we're using three to box in the trailer. We have this nice synthetic carpet that we use. It allows you to come out without your shoes on. There's zip up doors here. It really provides an excellent space if you're weathering a day or two with nonstop rain. For that same reason, we brought this uh, table, I actually bought this at a yard sale, but they're still selling stuff like this on Amazon. It allows you to set up um, a kitchen inside your canopy you can use like your Coleman uh, stove you can set up your coolers underneath it you see we got like a cheese platter out there's things that hold paper towels and lanterns and swinging hook hooks the reason I like this so much is because the bushwhacker galley when it's raining is almost impossible to use um, the water gets in there and it's not just coming through the sides it runs around the hint the hinge uh, it's very difficult to use when it's pouring out so to have this little inside kitchen space here is just an absolute must the next thing I have here that's a little gadgety is our light setup um, I'll, I'll post in a picture of us using this at night but these are just little uh, colored gold zero lights that swing they're designed to use a very very small amount of power so i actually hook it up to a dewalt tool battery with a little usb port um, these things run forever and if you bring a battery or two you could probably go for weeks and they they put out a pretty decent amount of light have a waterproof magnetic flashlight it sticks really nice to the roof rack of the bushwhacker it's got both a directional light and a floodlight um, of course we have the floodlight on the bushwhacker itself but when you're out boondocking any place you can conserve energy helps we use these command hooks for everything um, I have posted these in other videos but I installed these months ago I've taken these things around the country uh, hot cold rainy you know going 70 miles an hour they really do hold up well we're putting ripples harness on it for this week something like that all right if we're gonna do a tour of the campsite i can't hide anything i gotta show you the silly stuff too most of the time when you are camping with a teardrop camper or any camper for that matter, it's best to get your tongue on the uphill side if you're parked on an incline because to elevate the tongue up, you do lose a lot of stability. I actually found uh, an old bucket of tar that's set up with some boards to help get this up. And I got a pretty stable setup, but uh, yeah, that's not something that you'll see every day. So we mentioned that this site does not have water hookups, does not have electric. So I'm gonna take a minute to show you how we account for that when we go out on these trips. For starters, I don't like to travel with the 24 gallon uh, reservoir full. Anyone who owns one of these bushwhackers knows that that reservoir is very convenient, but it's not supported really well. Um, I don't recommend putting 24 gallons of water in there and traveling for several hours on back roads. It just doesn't feel like it's as secure as you want it to be. For that reason, I bring one of these igloo uh, containers. It actually has a spout on it, so you can stop someplace to get water once you're camped and uh, it pours really nicely into the reservoir. It's very uh, convenient for that. This place has a bath house about 50 yards up. Um, I'll fill up from there and just use five gallons at a time. For electric, I'm running 120 amp hour AGM. 
And I have a Goal Zero charge controller. This is a weatherproof 20 amp. Um, I have it running to the battery with a plug, with an Anderson plug here. I'm gonna do videos on all of this stuff, how I installed it, um, what I use it for. I'm just kind of showing you today. The battery's topped off. I'm using 200 watts of solar. This is the Boulder 200. It's a monocrystalline gas uh, glass panel. And then I have the Nomad 100. Um, they sit out between the 120 amp hour AGM and my Goal Zero 1500X. This provides me more than enough charging capability. I, I use this to charge both my portable power station and the camper battery. Now, Lucia is pointing from behind the camper uh, camera. She wants me to show you the old Schoharie Creek Field Station. We talked about how unusual this campsite is. Here's an old field station for scientific research along the Schoharie Creek. <laughs> so one piece of gear, you've seen this in other videos of mine, that's an absolute must for any teardrop enthusiast, is a clam set screen room like this. These easy up uh, gazebo style screens. Um, this one is made by X Gear. Amazon discontinued this last year. It's basically the same thing as a clam set. I'll throw a link in the description to the comparable one that I get from clam set. But they have detachable walls that make these things excellent when you have like a rain day out on your camp trip. You can play cards. We set it up with AstroTurf and chairs. We read books, even watch movies. These things are incredible. They're good for bugs. And when you attach the guy wires down properly, I've had this thing through some pretty severe thunderstorms. The worst that happens is the roof pushes in and you gotta pop it back up. So if you haven't seen one of these, um, these things are amazing. Uh, I'll throw the link in the description. Everyone should have one of these. So while we're packing up camp here, I'll take a minute to answer some frequently asked questions and offer a few more tips and tricks about tiny camper living. The setup you see us using here takes about an hour to set up and an hour to break down. This is a little bit more than what I prefer, but like I mentioned in the video, this is like the full stop setup. You know, we brought almost everything for this trip. You know, the one exception might be for winter camping when we tend to bring even a little bit more gear than this. Obviously the pickup truck helps for this, but if you notice when we're packing up here, a lot of the stuff we're using, we're actually putting in the bushwhacker. We're using the bushwhacker in this case, like a cargo trailer. This is because in addition to Ripple, we also brought our friend Scott, who was backpacking and tent camping. And to make room for him in the truck, you know, we were able to put more gear into the bushwhacker. As always, I've included links to everything that I use in the description, the little drop down arrow below the video. This has exact links to the products that I test and use. I search for the best price. And when you use those links, they're affiliate links. So I get a small portion of the proceeds. It would probably take me a decade to recoup what I spent on camera gear to make these videos. But if you are interested in any of this stuff, I really do appreciate when you use those links. I don't know if you'll be able to see from the time lapse, but we're very, very thorough when we put our gear away. This is not something that comes naturally to me. I have to take the time to do this. Um, it's a lesson hard earned that really comes from when you get to camp and you're excited to set up, how much easier of an experience it is when your gear is put away as close to factory original as possible. This means taking the time to wind your cords up, using the bags and making sure everything fits in the bag and putting things away as dry and neatly as possible. You know, it's for this reason that a lot of times when I'm talking to other camper enthusiasts, we talk about if there's only one day on our entire trip that the weather is nice, we almost always prefer for it to be the last. I can camp in bad weather, but packing gear up in bad weather is no good. It generally means you have to set everything back up when you get home and wait for it to dry out. There's nothing like having you know, all of your gear smell like mildew. So for that reason, occasionally we'll even stay an extra day if it's raining on the day that we're planning on packing up.
In this case, it rained the entire week, and it was really nice that it was uh, sunny for a few hours while we pack all of our gear up. Well, it looks like we're just about done here, so uh, we're going to sign off till next time. Make sure you hit the like button if you like the video. I really appreciate the thumbs up. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't. We're a brand new channel, and as we grow, those subscriptions allow us to do more things. So we really appreciate that. As a special little uh, bonus for anyone who made it this far in the video, if you leave a comment, a one-word comment with the color of our cooler in this video, I will enter your name into a tiny little sweepstakes and send you something cool from the DIY Outdoor Life channel. So as always, leave your questions, leave your normal comments, but take the time to add an extra comment just saying what color the cooler is in this video. Uh, we don't normally get a lot of comments, so chances are you uh, have a pretty good shot of winning. So check that out. We will see you next time. Thank you guys so much. Mm -hmm.